Hi, this is Jonna Kennedy Preston. Thank you for joining today. We're planning to go over the reporting requirements for the Provider Relief Fund. Providers who received the first distribution of payments have until September 30th to meet these reporting requirements. Again, this is an overview of the data that you'll need to have available when you're ready to report. To assist with the data collection process, HHS has provided an Excel workbook to help with the data collection. In the eBlast you received, there's a link to that actual Excel workbook. But that's what we're gonna review here today is the workbook, again, provided by HHS in order to assist with the data collection of the information you'll need when reporting. So the first part of the workbook is the instructions which gives the different payment date received and when the reporting timeframes are. Again, we're in the first period, first distribution, anybody receiving $10,000 or more during the April 10th of 2020 to June 30th, 2020 must report by the end of September of September of this year. The first tab of data collected is they wanna know in addition to the HHAS money that you received, what other additional funds did you receive? Had you received any rural health COVID uh, testing funds, this would, sec the very top section would be pre-populated. They wanna know any um, SBA money received, the PPP money, the Paycheck Protection Program money, any money received from FEMA, any money received directly from HHS for the COVID testing. If you received any money from local, state, or other tribal government assistance, SBA loans, for example. If you received any money from your business interruption insurance, or any other financial assistance during the reporting period that you received. So again, this is any funds received to help uh, with COVID that was outside of the HHAS money that you received. They want to know by quarter broken down for received in 20 and 21. The infection control payments only a are applicable to nursing home. So unless you're a nursing home, you can disregard this particular tab. For all others, the expenses that they're wanting to account for are going to be on the other PRF payments tab. For those who received less than $500,000 in your first payment, you're gonna fill out table A which basically just is requiring by quarter for 2020 and the first two quarters of 2021, you report COVID attributed expenses in two categories, general and administrative and health related expenses. If you received more than 500,000, you're going to complete table B, which makes you itemize those particular expenses by quarter for 2020 and the first two quarters of 2021. It gives you a general idea for those that just need to report in bulk any general and administrative expenses, again, attributable to COVID, what falls into each of those categories of GNA or health-related expenses. The unreimbursed expense tab is basically the net of what you received from HHS, less your COVID-related expenses, any expenses that were left over uh, that didn't get reimbursed from some other source would be reported in this particular section. Again, just in the GNA expense category and health-related expense categories for the four quarters of 2020 and the first two quarters of 2021. The next section is only going to be filled out if you were able to spend your entire disbursement amount on COVID-related expenses, then you simply on 
this sheet report your total 2019 actual patient care revenue and total 2020 actual patient care revenue. But again, if you didn't spend all of your HHS money on COVID-related expenses, you're simply going to put zeros on in these two sections on this tab. For those that did not spend all the money on COVID-related expenses, you're going to go to one of three options uh, to report your loss in revenue. Lost revenue option number one is those who can report actual 2019 to actual 2020 and, and tw first two quarters of 2021, your actual patient care revenue broken down by payer type. So if you can report your lost revenue actual to actual year over year, then you'll simply report it based on how much of the total revenue came from Medicare Part A and Part B, how much came from Medicare Part C, and for those who don't know what that is, those are your Medicare Advantage plans, any patient revenue um, that came from Medicaid or the, the Children's Health Insurance Program, how much of your revenue came from commercial insurance, self-pay, and then any other patient revenue that you received. For example, if you have a contract with the county jail to see their inmates um, and you get a stipend for doing that, uh, for seeing those inmates, it would go into this other category. So again, if you're able to report actual to actual year over year, this is the option that you're going to complete. If you're not able to report actual to actual year over year, the option number two is you can report your budgeted. So you would report your budgeted 2020 to your actual 2021, as long as the budget that you're reporting was finalized on or before March 27th of 2020. If it was not, finalized prior to that deadline, you cannot use budgeted numbers. Again, they want you to break it down by payer type, but instead of reporting 2019 to 2020, uh, you're reporting budgeted 2020 to your actual 2020, your budgeted 2021 to your actual 2021 for the first two quarters of the year. If, that, if this is not an option, there is a third option to report revenue, <clears throat> lost revenue, <clears throat> which is basically any other reasonable method. And again, they're leaving it to you to determine what is a reasonable method. And you have to explain how you came up with your method to report what your losses in the four quarters of 2020 and your first two quarters of 2021 uh, were. So again, this is only if option one and option two are not options for you. Again, then they leave it up to any other reasonable method. The last thing that in the reporting portal that you'll be asked for is what they're calling uh, personnel, patient, and facility metrics. So they would like to know, broken down by quarter for all of 2019, all of 2020, and the first two quarters of 2021, how many full-time clinical versus non-clinical staff you had, how many part-time clinical versus non, contract labor, staff that you might have furloughed, staff that was separated, meaning they either were terminated or they chose to resign, and then in any new hires, again, in the clinical and non-clinical categories. The patient metrics, they're asking that you provide how many of the patients seen during each of these quarters were inpatient admissions versus outpatient visits, emergency department visits, and any patients that were seen in either long or short-term residential facilities. The facility metrics is only for those that are 
considered facilities where you have medical surgical beds, critical care beds, or any other beds. Again, this workbook link was in your e-blast and is available for you to uh, utilize as you're collecting your data and running your reports. When you go to report, first you must make sure that you're registered on the HHS reporting portal. Once you start your reporting, again, you'll populate each of these categories, if you will, via the reporting portal. You will not be required to upload any supporting documentation. However, this completed workbook, all reports and all documentation in order to support all the data that was uh, submitted should be kept on hand in case of audit. Thank you again for joining me today. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. My contact information is on this slide. Thank you again.